y'all welcome back or welcome to my channel my name is Sierra and I post videos on this channel every single Friday I post Christian booktube content so if you're into that kind of thing I highly recommend pressing subscribe today's video is one of my absolute favorites to do and that is a read with me vlog of The Orchard House by Heidi Chevaroli. fun fact it took me this long, having read almost all of her books, to learn how to pronounce Heidi's last name. It is Heidi Chevaroli. So every video before this, when I've pronounced it completely wrong, please forgive me. But anyway, today's Read With Me vlog is on her latest release, The Orchard House. Actually, it's not her latest release. She has released another book after this, but it is her latest time slip release and I was so thrilled and shocked and in awe of this book the entire time I read it. I do really, really like it. I had a lot of thoughts on it, a lot of thoughts that I wasn't able to put into this video, but the ones I did were important and I hope you like it. So I did unbox this book last week in my haul and then I read it between the time I filmed that video and then I'm putting this one out. I got a few things wrong with my description of The Orchard House in that video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clear it up now. <laughs> and tell you the real description of it and then go ahead and get into the actual video. The historical character in this book is Joanna and Joanna becomes a friend of Louisa May Alcott. Yes, Louisa May Alcott who wrote Little Women. That is kind of one of the driving factors of this book is it's revolving around Louisa May Alcott and her writing and influence on history and on other authors. Uh, but anyway, Joanna, the historical character, befriends Louisa May Alcott, and um, there's so much that happens in Joanna's story that I'll get into, but she ends up getting married and going through very diff various different things throughout her life, and Louisa is a very good friend to her through all of that. The present day character's name is Taylor, and we open the book in, I forget what year, but basically when Taylor is young and we learn about her and how she was adopted into the Bennett family, and then we progress kind of through her childhood and then young adulthood until this one specific moment, and then there's a jump to when Taylor is an adult in 2019 and goes back to the Bennett family after having run away from them. Those are some light spoilers, but it's nothing that's not on the back of the book. So take that as you will. But I absolutely adored this book and I can't wait for y'all to go hear my thoughts. So please enjoy. Oh my word, I am only six chapters through The Orchard House, but my jaw has already dropped open. This book is already something else. Um, wow. So, like I said, I'm six chapters through it. I read the first four were from Taylor's perspective, which was kind of like her growing up a little bit, going from 13 through the end of college. And things happened pretty fast. And at the end of that section, at the end of that final, final chapter with her, um, that was when, like, I was blown away at what happened. And I don't know if, like, that's just a me thing where I don't expect things to happen to characters. Because I'm like, everything is going fine. What could go wrong? And, like, I forget that conflict happens in books. But, oh my word, I cannot even begin to explain. I've talked about this before in some of my videos, how there are just moments, certain moments in books where you have to just sit and stare at the wall for a little bit to process what you just read and what in the world is going to happen next. And that was that moment. Normally that doesn't happen until like towards the end of a book. Normally I'll finish it actually. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, but no fourth chapter in and I'm staring at my wall. <laughs> I also read the first two chapters from Joanna's perspective and I, there wasn't, like I'm not really sure where her story is gonna go. I'm 
like obviously it's gonna go somewhere but I didn't like we didn't get as much from Joanna as we did from Taylor so I'm definitely excited to read more from both women's perspectives oh I also love how much Taylor adores Little Women and Louisa May Alcott like that is just so heartwarming to me how like she looks up to her and she cherishes her copy of Little Women I don't know that was just really really sweet to me and I liked it it just added to the charm of her character but anyway yep those are my thoughts so far good morning folks I don't know what time you're watching this but it is morning for me and I am 15 chapters through The Orchard House <sighs> this book is already just doing things to me that I shouldn't let books do to me, but I do. So anyway, my actual thoughts so far. The portions from Joanna's perspective that are set in the 1860s are really, really sweet. And honestly, like so much of it just reminds me of Little Women. And like, it's very obvious that that portion of the book is supposed to show how Louisa May Alcott's life inspired much of the setting and events for Little Women. And honestly, like, it's so heartwarming to read. It's very, like, just sweet and nice and simple compared to the modern day story with Taylor, which is full of a lot of pain, a lot of unresolved uh, hurt, and definitely things that I can see are like, I can kind of see where some of the things are going. I can see where I'd like certain things to be going in Taylor's story. But anyway, yeah, the contrast is striking compared to um, some of Heidi Chavaroli's other books, but uh, yeah, there are definitely some similarities, but there are more contrasts than normal, which I think I actually kind of like, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts so far. We have a really simple, sweet, heartwarming story, and then Taylor's story just, uh, I cannot get enough of it. I am literally addicted to reading this book. I cannot put it down. I didn't want to go eat breakfast this morning because I literally woke up and just started reading the book. That's all I want to do. It's just read. 21 chapters through. 21? I think so. And, uh, yes. 21. And let me just apologize for when I, for every time in a Read With Me vlog when I say one thing and then I have to contradict myself later on. This particular time, um, I, I said in one of the clips, I don't remember which one, that like all of the chapters from Joanna's perspective so far have been like really sweet, down to earth, heartwarming, simple, and like then I kept reading and that story got real, like real quick. It definitely already had real elements in it, but oh my gosh, her relationship with one of the characters just, it didn't blow up, but I feel like it's about to. Feel like it's about to blow up and that just that opens the door for so much character development and then taylor's story oh oh my gosh i'm eating it up normally normally i prefer the historical stories over the modern day stories because i just love historical fiction like so much but honestly i'd have to say i am a bigger fan of taylor's story right now only because, like, I will give this reason for it. Taylor's story is so original. Her thoughts and her feelings are very original. The obstacles she faces are, like, so genuine, so real. I, like, I want to know what's going to happen so, so badly. Joanna's, same thing. I want to know what's going to happen, and I want to see her character progress and develop. The only thing is, that story, like, this historical fiction is so um it's so inspired from little women that there are certain events that are honestly almost taken straight from little women and i can kind of see how like it's meant to show that those events are what inspired Louisa May Alcott to put certain chapters and events into little women but i just think that parts of it are a little not cliche, but just a little too 
a little too inspired from Little Women, but that's just my thoughts. I still love both sections of it. And I also have started seeing more parallels between Taylor and Joanna's stories, which is another contradiction of what I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'll get back to you later with more thoughts. 28 chapters through The Orchard House. This book continues to hurt me and make me happy because it's such a good story. Well, two stories, really. Right now, what I am loving about uh, Taylor's story is there were certain things that like I wanted to happen and I thought might happen to bring about other things in the book that like came true so like my suspicions and my hopes happened and that is not me saying that this book is predictable it's not I was completely shocked with some of the way certain things came about like the way that uh, some of the walls were knocked down between Taylor and her sister Victoria I did not see that coming about at all, like the way what they bonded over and the event that made it happen. Wasn't expecting that at all. I was quite shocked. My thoughts on Joanna's story, I just finished chapter 27, no 28, and oh, that was such a heartbreaking, hurtful chapter for Joanna. Like, oh, my heart just goes out to her. It's so sad I man I was sitting on my balcony I was like I'm not gonna cry I'm not I'm not gonna cry outside in public <laughs> um but yeah that there's potential but I'm also really not sure where her story is going I'm eager to find out what happens because I just don't know it's not that there is no story it's just that I have no clue where it's going to go so those are my current thoughts. I will talk with you again once I have finished it. All right, I finished it and I could say so much, but I do want to keep it short because I am um, already am fearing that this video is getting long. The conclusion with Taylor, it just everything connected and so like seamlessly just re resolved itself, if that makes sense. I'm not finding the right words, but it was a beautiful resolution that held so much hope and promise. And like, you could almost read in the, her last chapter that like, you could kind of see what was gonna come next and the continued uh, resolution that was going to happen after you finished the book. That's the way I felt about it. Joanna's ending, on the other hand, was so very heartbreaking. She did not get the conclusion that I wanted, although her conclusion did. There were parts of it that I could see hope and promise. I wish we could have found out if there was a certain event, like this certain thing that I wanted to happen with another character. I really wanted to see if that was going to take place. In my mind, it did, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, but both endings mirrored each other in how much hope and promise they left open to reader discernment, and I really appreciated that. They definitely, both stories definitely paralleled each other in places, and I just, I loved it. I quite enjoyed it. Again, once again, Heidi Chevroli has written a phenomenal book, and I, I cannot wait to read her next book. Uh, I just can't wait. I, I love them so much. They're always so amazing. So thank y'all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and if you have read The Orchard House, please let me know your thoughts about it. I'd love to talk about it in the comments. But once again, thank you so much and I will see you next week for whatever video that is. Until then, bye!